Today we are planting one of our corn fields. We are using drip tape irrigation in this field. If you want to see what we think about drip tape irrigation and a little bit of how to put it together, stick around and keep watching this video. So today we are planting a little cornfield using drip tape irrigation and we are going to be germinating about half of the cornfield today. We already did a little patch. I don't know if you can see right over there. Those were started in the greenhouse and then we direct sowed some that are already starting to come up and so this is the next little crop that we're going to have and then we're going to do one more crop in about a week. This is our first year using drip tape irrigation and so far we really like it. The thing so far that we haven't liked about it though is it gets pretty windy here in Montana and we didn't stake it down in the middle earlier and it blew all over the place. So we have since went through and relayed the lines and staked everything down in the middle and on the two edges and hopefully this holds in the future. Once the corn is established and grows up, we won't have to worry about these lines moving around obviously. So a little bit about the install. The install was pretty easy. We just laid out a bunch of the sticks essentially or just strips of the drip tape irrigation and then they're just kind of plug and play in the main line and the main line yep. is just a poly pipe one of those regular i think they're half inch john yep one of those half inch ones that you can get at home depot or lowe's or something like that and then we just connected it up to our main water source and this will all be on a timer which will make everything super easy so let's go look at what we plugged in here we took our half inch poly pipe that we got from Home Depot and you, you take your cat your pipe and you roll it along the end of your whatever you're you're plugging your drip tape into and you buy a cap half hitch end cap put it on your end and these are just compression fits so you just push them on and then next we're going to go down and we're going to put a hose end uh, cap on this other end we're going to cut it off put a hose end on and you can screw it screw it onto a garden hose fitting and then you buy the hose fitting attachment and there's there's a pipe thread and there's a hose thread difference and uh, if you get a pipe thread fitting for your hose it'll leak so try to make sure you differentiate between the two if you're buying this stuff i made that mistake here last time it just presses in there just compression fit again and then that screws into the bottom of your timer Timer's automatic watering, so you set the timer. You can have four different starts throughout the day on this particular timer, and it'll run for as long as you, you set it for. So one kind of important thing about doing drip tape irrigation is you have to have a pressure reducer. So this pressure reducer right here, it's this little white thing. This takes the PSI down to 15 PSI, which is important because we did plug it in without it and our lines got pretty full. So yeah, pressure reducer is definitely a must with drip tape irrigation. So this is our main water line right here and the main lot water goes all the way across the front here, all the way to the other end. And these are the connectors that we bought. So these are the connectors that connect to the poly pipe and they're pretty simple. You just put a hole in your main poly pipe using a poly pipe hole punch. And then you connect this little fitting on here and this little fitting you just, this is the, the drip tape line. You just push it right in and then this little nut screws right over it. Super slick. These are the admitters right here or where the water comes out. We did also use this type of irrigation on our tomato garden. If you're following our channel, you'll see that. And so far it's been really great there too. And I know I mentioned staking the garden earlier. That is a definite must. We decided to go with some landscape staples and this is what they look like. We just got them off of Amazon and those have been pretty awesome. This box was not very expensive for how much value it's added and how easy it is to just pull them out of the box and not have to make all of the staples, which in the past we've made all of our staples and that's just kind of time consuming. And we are also going to be using these throughout all of our other gardens. So it's kind of just a nice thing to have on hand without having to make them all. So right now we have about half of this corn patch planted. We are planning on planting the other half of the corn patch in about a week. Yep, uh, we seeded it in and used drip tape irrigation to water it. Mm -hmm. And a little recap on the drip tape. Um, we wanted to show you a little bit more specifically of how it works. So he has a little demo for you about we used, that. We use the half inch poly that you get from Home Depot or whatever. Here's a chunk of it just to show you what it looks like. It's pretty relatively rigid compared to the tape. And um, 
you lay it out as your header line or your source line off of your water system and then so you take take a punch that you can buy at Home Depot or Lowe's anyway you take your punch and you can just snap it on there and it puts a hole in for you and then your you buy these barb connectors from we got our stuff from Drip Depot they were very quick and easy to get everything bought from them they have a little barb on it that just pokes into the poly hole doesn't really look like it's going to fit but it does boom clicks in and then your tape slides over and then this just is it's all low pressure so it doesn't take much to connect without leaking and this little collar here just twists down and tightens and that's all there is to it so we have that down 29 rows worth running down to end caps that we're going to get from drip depot too if you uh, are running anything anything with a half inch poly up you can get a nice punch like this which makes it pretty easy or a punch like this which works pretty dang good too we recommend getting this punch over this punch for your poly line because you don't have to force it as much it's a lot easier to use so the little thing comes out punches a hole in for you the drip tape we got is 15 mil with one foot spacing for our corn our tomato garden is five foot spacing we got the 15 mil because it's a little heavier duty and we're hoping to use it uh, year after year we'll see if it holds up or not we'll let you know this fall yep so you can obviously pick how far apart you want the different drip points or emitters to be and there are lots of different options but this is just what we went with the thicker stuff is more expensive obviously and the thinner stuff is cheaper but it might not hold up as long when you pull it out in the fall it might break or whatever from what i've heard so in this cornfield we are planting a variety of corn called northern extra sweet it's supposed to be a 66 day to maturity variety and we are doing a different cornfield in the back they're about three to four hundred feet apart that variety is called luscious we will hopefully not have an issue with cross pollination between those two and we will have a little comparison of what we think of between the two varieties which we're kind of excited to do because we've never really grown two different varieties of corn at one time so hopefully that works out pretty well everything's kind of a, a try it and see if it works with gardening and with growing stuff for us at the stage we're at with everything um, for this particular planting we staggered our crops a little bit the stuff that you can see pretty clearly right in front of us. This was started in the greenhouse, how long ago? Mid-May. So we transplanted this about the 1st of June. And then the stuff behind the stuff that was started mid-May back there in these first five rows, that was direct seeded into the garden the 1st of June. And then we planted the next 12 or 13 rows about June 8th, I wanna 10th. say, or 10th, something like that. And then we're gonna plant the rest of it is another 12 or 13 rows in about a couple of days here. So the first five rows we transplanted from the greenhouse and then filled the rest of the rows in. So that's about 500 plants. And then the rest of the corn we planted out so far is about 12 or 1300 plants. Mm -hmm. And then we have another 12 or 1300 more to go whenever <laughs> we get around to it. Yep, so we're gonna have a lot of sweet corn. We're pretty excited. Each one of these rows is roughly about 100 stalks of corn. So that's kind of an easy way for us to kind of keep track of how much we're planting this year mm -hmm. in this we, particular field. We didn't want to plant it or have seed like sitting in the ground when it's going to be in the 30s and 40s. We had some relatively decent temperatures, decent nighttime lows mm -hmm. lately, but now we have a little cold snap coming up. So we're kind of waiting on that to plant again. Yep, because corn does need really warm soil temperatures in order to germinate. So we just have to make sure our soil temperatures do stay warm enough for this stuff to get germinating so it can start growing. It's important to, to note that we did five rows to start with our transplanting stuff because if you do any less than that, you won't get proper pollination on your corn. So if you are planting corn, it's important to make sure you plant it in blocks instead of just a narrow row, like with two two different rows or whatever it wouldn't pollinate very well and then you won't have ears with kernels in it yeah we've definitely had that problem before in the past we staggered our crop our corn crops so that we can sell them easily at our farm stand right out here on the end of our on the, our street here and then at the farmer's market we don't want to have it all come in at once and have to just offload it all at once mm -hmm. so right now we'll have a small early crop that will just kind of probably sell in the farm stand and enjoy ourselves. And then we will have a larger crop that should hopefully be ready middle of August. And then another larger crop that should hopefully be ready at the end of August, if everything works out 
as it should. <laughs> and speaking of as it should, we have some cold temperatures coming up in the next few nights. So we're just hoping that everything survives, honestly. We're supposed to be getting into the high 30s. High 30s. Depending on the forecast you yeah. look at, in a town about an hour away is supposed to freeze tonight, which is a little higher in elevation, but still. A little spooky. Yeah. <laughs> a little but scary. For late June, it should it's uh, kind of a late time for getting frost. Yeah, because today is June 19th and we're in Montana. So this is just kind of what we have to deal with sometimes. So right now, as far as what we have planted, we are on time. I know it might seem really late compared to a lot of people in other areas of the country, but for us with what we've grown before, we are on time. But at the same time, we're trying to beat the frost at the end of the season too. So it's really a fine tuning of when to start things, when to get them in the ground, and when to hopefully have them so that they will be ready to harvest by. Usually for us, June is kind of a transplant month and they, everything just kind of hems and haws and sits in the ground. Mm -hmm. Doesn't do much. July and August, really things really start to grow because we get hotter summer days and yeah. things will blow up. Yeah, really start to go, which is pretty exciting. That's it for our drip tape corn patch. If you like this video and want to watch how this garden grows, please like and subscribe to see more. Yep, and we would really appreciate you liking and subscribing. We are kind of in a stage right now where we are kind of shifting our focus from just growing food for ourselves and occasionally selling st stuff at the farmer's market to more of like a market farm situation. Um, and it's something we've kind of been thinking about and toying with for a long time, but this year we really decided to just dive in. So we have two corn patches and a dedicated only tomato garden and our regular garden and we're going to have a lot of produce so it's going to be pretty exciting um, and if you want to follow us for that journey please like and subscribe and thanks so much for watching this video